And here we are again, Leviticus chapter 24, verse 6. Oh, boy. And you shall set them in two rows, six on a row. Notes, all of this bread representing Christ, of course. Scripture, upon the pure table before the Lord. Notes, now this pure table, remind you, was covered with pure gold that stood before the Lord. Pure frankincense was to be burned upon the pure table. This signified that all things connected with Jehovah and his worship were to be pure, thus typifying the purity of life and conduct of the worshipers who come before him. Verse 7. And you shall put pure frankincense upon each row, that it may be on the bread for a memorial. Notes. Now you've got to remember that frankincense is a bitter substance. And upon each row, well, there were two stacks of cakes, six on the stack, with a container of frankincense on the top of each stack continually burning. Scripture, that it may be on the bread for a memorial. Notes, well, what are we wanting to, what are we wanting to memorize? Well, the memory of Christ must be kept alive constantly, which, by and large, to, it pertains to what he did for us at the cross. Scripture, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Notes. Now, the burning of the frankincense at the top of the stacks made the shoe bread an offering made by fire unto Jehovah. Actually, the loaves were not burned in the fire, for they were to be eaten by the priest in the holy place as the most holy of the offerings. The fire represented judgment, rather the burning out of the dross in the lives of believers. Uh, or actually the judgment for sin. You can find that in Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. And the judgment for sin, well, we covered that in chapter 10 of Leviticus, the very first uh, couple of verses there. Verse 8. Every Sabbath he shall set in it order before the Lord continually. Notes. Uh, another way of saying that could be every Sabbath all twelve loaves on the bread were to be eaten by the priest with new loaves taking their place. It was a type of our partaking of Christ as the bread of life and taking continuously. John chapter 6 verse 58. Go ahead and read it. Scripture. Being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. Notes. This pertains to the fact that every Israelite had to give a half shekel of silver each year, which contributed annually toward the maintenance of the service in the sanctuary, the securing of ingredients, and you know, and other such things. Silver, remind you, represented redemption, which is what Christ would bring about as a result of his death on the cross. Verse 9. And it shall be Aaron's and his son's. Notes, well, this refers to the entirety of the priesthood which were to be in charge of the, uh, were in the lineage of Aaron. Scripture, and they shall eat of it in the holy place. For it is most holy unto him of the offerings of the Lord made by fire by a perpetual statute. Notes, in other words, all of this was fulfilled in Christ, but it continues to be perpetual in that believers are to partake of Christ constantly. He is our rest, which is so typified by the Sabbath. Verse 10. And we're going to have some problems here. And the son of an Israelitish woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the children of Israel. And this son of the Israelitish woman... And a man of Israel strove together in the camp. Notes. Now this is the picture in type of the nation of Israel itself, represented by the son of the Israelitish woman who would seek to kill the true man of Israel, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch this. Verse 11. And the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. Notes. The idea is he actually cursed God and God's law. Scripture, and they brought him unto Moses, and his mother brought, and his mother's uh, name was Shilomith, 
the daughter of Dibri of the tribe of Dan. Notes. The fact that both her personal and tribal names are so distinctly specified here indicates that the, re the record of this incident is designed to point out the ungodly issue of so unholy an alliance and to guard the Hebrew women against intermarriage with heathen. Verse 12. And they put him in ward that the mind of the Lord might be shown them. Notes. In other words, they threw him in jail. Uh, the subjection of mind that appears in this verse and the anxiety to do what God wished and not to act in the heat of their own judgment is very gracious. Let's go ahead and keep on reading. Verse 13. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Bring forth him who is cursed without the camp, and let all who heard him lay their hands upon his head, and let all the congregation stone him. Notes. Now, physical death under the new covenant is not now demanded because Jesus fulfilled the law in every respect. In effect, dying for all, but still, to be sure, spiritual death follows for anyone who takes the word of God lightly. Now, a lot of people read this and they get the idea that this man just simply raised his fist and started cursing and saying God's name in vain and all these other things. Well, actually, what this person did was pretty much say that God and everything that he is doing is pretty much worthless, which uh, constituted far worse than just simply using, you know, God's name followed by a four-letter word or before a four-letter word. This was taken very, very seriously because of this particular blasphemy. Verse 15. And you shall speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curses his God shall bear his sin. Notes. Well, when we're talking about bearing their sin, it's like saying you're going to suffer the consequences for it. You do the crime, you do the time, in other words. Verse 16. And he who blasphemes the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death, and all the congregation shall surely, shall certainly stone him, as well the stranger as he who is born in the land, when he blasphemes the name of the Lord, shall be put to death. Verse 17. Now, uh, well, actually, notes. Here we are. God is going to remind people of some of the things that are worthy of death. Verse 17. And he who murders any man shall surely be put to death. And he who kills a beast shall make it good, beast for beast. Notes. Well, what is this talking about in verse 18? These laws had already been given and recorded in Exodus chapter 21. At least one of the reasons they are repeated is that it must be known that they are applicable alike to the proselyte, the Gentile, and the Israelite. And it's talking about if you, if you do this to an animal, you're going to have to replace it. Verse 19. And if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor as he has done, show it, so shall it be done to him. Verse 20. Breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he has caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him again. Notes. And like I say, a lot of these laws like this one right here, they were very seldom carried out. Most of the time, a value in money was placed upon the infraction, with it being paid to the victim, that is, if wrong had actually been done. Verse 21, And he who kills a beast, he shall restore it. And he who kills a man, he shall be put to death. Well, actually, he who murders a man shall be put to death. Big difference. Verse 22, You shall have one manner of law as well for the stranger as for one of your own country, for I am the Lord your God. As previous, notes, as previously stated, there must be one manner of law ap applicable in the same manner for all. Verse 23, And Moses spoke unto the children of Israel that they should bring forth him who had cursed out of the camp and stoned him with stones. And the children of Israel did as the Lord commanded Moses. We will pick up in Leviticus chapter 25. Thank you.